Hey, so you've got Ez and Jason for another Code Untapped Tech Podcast. How's it going, Jay? Yeah, well, busy as usual, Ez. Busy as usual. Yeah, what have you been up to? Eh? So we're in the middle of our funding round, yes. yeah, as you know, and uh, we're getting close to the close now. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. So it's really good because uh, I think uh, we're starting to get a little bit of the FOMO effect happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which I've is, seen that. Yeah, which is interesting because I think once you get to near the end in terms of uh, your allocation, then mm. you get people, be, well, people not, not wanting to miss out. Yeah. yeah. And that's you've kind of proven that you can raise some actual money. Exactly. Other people coming in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Starts to get exciting. Yeah. Some of the risk has been taken out, right? Exactly, exactly. So th this is all about, um, so this, the funding round really is all about building co in confidence in your investors. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And it's... And this is really, for us, it's about getting that cash so that we can really focus on traction for us. Yeah, yeah. 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 And But one of the things there is that's really important and what all of the investors actually need mm. is uh, they need to see uh, your data room. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah and it's interesting because I did not know what a data room was before <laughs> I, I started lot, this I think process. A lot of startup founders don't know what a data room is, right? <laughs> I didn't when we when we built neighbor, we didn't know what it, we didn't have one. Mm. In fact, we lost out on a potential 20 million pound investment mm. from a um Chinese investor mm. uh because we didn't have a data room. <laughs> they came and spoke to us. <laughs> So we were like, oh, okay, what's this data room thing? So yeah, so no, it's, it doesn't surprise me. So I think the first thing is, is if, is if you could like sort of explain the reason, we, we'll talk about what's in a data room, but first I think it's, I think it would be good to get like a, a reason why uh, a company needs a data room. Right. Yeah, what's the purpose for having a data room? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So a lot of, see, we touched on some of this in our last podcast, but I think it's, it's such an important subject mm. as part of fundraising, because it is important. And actually, it depends on the type of investors you're speaking to as well. Um, early, early stage, friends and family, they might not be that interested in the data room. But irrespective, I think it's good practice mm. to, to start down this road already because you're going to need one. Mm. So rather than talk about what a data room is, let's, yeah, let's talk about what it, what it does, what's mm. the purpose. And ultimately, it's a place where investors can find out more information about your startup. Um, important documents and, and important data about who you are, what you've been doing, proof points, um, any research, et cetera, et cetera, so that they can do their due diligence and their research on your startup before they make a decision. So that's ultimately what a data room is for. So I know you've got a bit of a data room at the moment. So, mm. so what's in your data room for you? It's actually all of those things that you talked about. We have, uh, and we also have other things. So we have things like our certificate of incorporation. Right. Yeah. So that validates who we are from a legal perspective. Yeah. yeah. We have uh, things like the invest, investment proposal. So that's right. like the term sheet. What What is the deal? Essentially, yeah. what are they yeah. going to get out of it? We have um, we have our deck in there as well. Yeah. And then we have things like our technology roadmap, our market insights. Yeah. yeah. And we also have our financial model. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. So this is because basically um, the investor think they not only need to see your vision. Yeah. yeah. But what does that vision actually mean in terms of mm. brass tax, in terms of numbers? Yeah? yeah. And that's your financial model. So it's tying all of those things together. Your vision, your execution in terms of your roadmap. You know, what does that mean for your bottom line and your right. return on investment with yeah. your financial model? And is your company in order? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Certificate incorporation, any share, share documents, that sort of stuff. Yeah. 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 So I guess maybe we should just before. So we've touched a little bit on, you know, what the data room is for. Right. But maybe we should talk about what the data room is. Mm. Right. Because we can talk about all these documents. But people are going to go, okay, okay, sounds great. But what, what is it? What, where, where do I put it? You know, mm. how does that work? And uh, some people think it's this magical, mystical thing <laughs> that you have to create. And you can only do it if you're with this big investment bank like Goldman Sachs. Oh, they'll create a data room for me. No, all a data room is, is a folder somewhere that contains a lot of files about your company that someone else can gain access to and read, mm. right? That's all it is, right? Mm. Ultimately, you know, you could have a USB drive mm. with all these important files and give them to your <laughs> investors and treat that as a data room mm. if you really wanted to. You could zip all the files up, 
put them in a folder and email them to your car. I wouldn't recommend you do that, no. but you know, you could if mm. you really wanted to. Mm. But ultimately, the best thing to have is some kind of online location mm. where investors can be sent a link, mm. they can go to it, mm. and then they can review those files mm. in their own time. That is your data room, mm. right? Mm. And there are different systems that enable this. Some companies will use a Google Drive yeah. and set up a folder on G Drive mm. and then limit access to only those investors who've been given, access, given yeah. permission. And then in that, they might have a folder structure with different files in, and that forms a data room. Mm. Others might use Dropbox, mm. for example. Or DocSend. Or, or DocSend. Yeah. Um, now, the reason why people use different systems is usually cost. Mm. DocSend's a bit more expensive mm. than using Google Drive or Dropbox, which are probably the main ones. Mm. Don't get me wrong. Uh, some accountants, accounting firms or fundraising companies will have their own data room infrastructure they can help you use. Um, but one of the things you do have to bear in mind when you create a data room is what type of investor you're speaking to and are they behind any firewalls mm. when they actually try to access your data room. Mm. So for example, if you've got a data room, so it's a folder on a shared G drive, so Google Drive, mm -hmm. if you're working in a corporate organization behind a corporate firewall yeah. they might not be able to access it mm. so if i'm a credit swiss as an investor for mm. example and i'm trying to access your google drive firewall sorry your google drive um data, data room. room my credit swiss firewall might Blocky. prevent me yeah. from gaining access and that becomes a problem mm. so quite often we see docsend is actually a really good solution to it this is. problem most corporates will give you access to DocSend. Mm. Um, uh, it's just a link, you go on. And the reason being is that they have no ability to upload content. Yes. Because the reason why you can't use um, Dropbox or Google Drive in most of these corporate environments is to prevent them from uploading internal documents and to... shipping them outside of their files. Exactly. Yeah. So that's why. Um, so I think you're using a combination. Of yeah, that. yeah. So uh, for the actual pitch deck distribution, we use actually Seed Legals, who are right. actually managing the funding rounds. So we use yeah. a Seed Legals link. We use DocSend as well for that very problem. Right. Yeah, for institutional investors. And then we've got G Drive for our actual uh, data room where right. we've got much more documents. But the thing I wanted to mention about DocSend, which I think is quite good, is that it gives you actually insights. It of, gives you insights. Yeah, Absolutely. so you can see how long a person has actually reviewed yeah. your document as a whole and actually each individual page, yeah. yeah? Which is really good if you're if you're actually developing your pitch, actually, yeah. because it actually, you can then, you, your pitch deck, because then you can, you can see that actually this slide here, no one's looking at it. Right. Yeah, yeah so absolutely. is that slide actually adding value at all? Yep. Can I just remove it, move yep. it, or replace it with something else? Yeah. But it's important to recognize that's only true for documents that can be converted to PDF. Yes, that's true. So yeah. spreadsheets, yeah. you won't get that level yeah. of insight because DocSend will actually force the end user to download it. Mm -hmm. So when they do that, you won't get any of those metrics. You will know that they downloaded the document, mm. but you won't know they what what they've been looking at mm. however if you're using dropbox or google drive yeah. you'll have no idea yeah you, you can get activity reports so you mm. can see what files they've looked at but mm. you won't get any of those types of insights that, that those rich so, and by the way we are not sponsored by yeah yeah, yeah definitely not they're definitely not well we should be <laughs> yeah, yeah. reach out to <laughs> yeah, us feel free, feel free. <laughs> <laughs> Come, come and have a talk. Yeah, that would be great. Um, you know, we, we can talk about your saying. We use DocSend at ImpactX. Jason's using DocSend yeah. um, for, for Yome. We, so we genuinely believe in the product, but we also we use G Drive. We as use well. G Drive as well, and yeah. we use CD yeah. as well. So, yeah. so that that's so that's really I just want to demystify mm. what a data room is. So to be really clear, mm. all a data room typically is is some kind of online folder. Mm. within which you have a series of documents right so, so that's it's re what's really interesting so yeah, so when should you set it up should you just as soon as you you know you know conceive your startup should you start collating or yeah. getting together these documents or do you only need to do this when you're about to start a funding round right. or when do you think is the best time to start bringing this information together in in, in a coherent way so i'd say from day one be thinking about file structures and how you store and sort your own information. Mm. You know, do you have a folder for your pitch decks? Do you have a folder for your company incorporation information? Do you have a folder for team CVs and mm. the rest? And be really 
you know, quite, um, what's the word, uh, disciplined about mm. this, right? No one's going to look at that internal system. Mm. But if you've got that information stored, filed away, when you need it, it becomes a lot easier, easier to, to find. find <laughs> yeah. It really does. Yeah. So many early stages, it's all in their Gmail somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there's, a, there's just attachments, attachments, attachments. And then it becomes a nightmare to gain access to the information. Yeah. So just a little tip to everyone, always from day one, get some kind of G Drive, Outlook, whatever it is, sorry, Microsoft 365, however you want to organize, just a file structure whereby you can store your files, right? Mm. And then you, you know what you're doing with them. Mm. And then after that, to be honest, it comes down to when do you start fundraising, mm. right? And I would say from the moment you start fundraising, mm. you should be thinking about creating a data room. Mm. Now, to be clear, if you're fundraising from angels, so high net worths, fam, fam, friends and family, people you know, most of them probably won't, probably won't want to look at it. Because they're investing in you, right? Yeah. But what tends to happen is you'll have a few good conversations and all of a sudden you'll get some early stage fund go oh we should have a chat mm, we mm. should have a chat <laughs> and that, if that's yeah. positive yeah. they'll want to have a look at your data room yeah. and then you go oh but we don't have a data room instantly that conversation yeah. falls away because they don't right? feel you, they don't feel you're credible you're not credible you're not mm. ready yeah, immediately yeah. right yeah. so it's very good just to start getting that process ready so that you can move very very quickly and that would be my recommendation. What I will say is the minute you have funds involved, mm. they will want access to yeah. your data. Room. They Definitely. just will. Yeah, yeah. Right. And any um, high net worth investor who really knows what they're doing will want to see at the minimum that you have a data. Room, yeah. Right. Yeah. They might not even look into it. Yeah. But they want to see it. They just want to know that it's there. Mm. Right. Because again, it suggests a level of credibility and experience. Mm. And that, that you've thought, you thought about you've it. Thought about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've yeah. thought about it. So do you, is there anything is that you think you just don't need in a data room. That's, uh, you know, that's, a, it's an, that's an interesting question. And it's not an angle that most people come from, which is what don't I need to put into a data room? Mm. Um, what do I need to put in? It's usually yeah. easier to come from it because, I mean, there's so much that, mm. you're, you're, that exists in your company. But mm. I'd say it is easier to come from the perspective of what do I need yeah. in my data room? And that list can be quite short. It can mm. be quite extensive. Mm. Some VC funds will have a very extensive list of requirements. Yeah. So well. that's so that's interesting as you say that because one particular, I've had a, a fund that's been right. interested and they've actually asked me to set up, they've actually provide documentation to their data. Yeah. 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 They'll so, say upload all your data. Yeah. Like, well, that's why I created a data yeah, yeah. in the first place. <laughs> yeah. So that I don't. Do it's that. interesting. And actually as well, I mean, I know this is sort of going off tangent a little bit, but some, um, some funds also ask you to fill out an application as well, yeah. which is very, can be very, very similar hmm. to your, um, very, very similar to your deck, the information yeah. that's in no, your no. deck as well. So yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll touch it. We, we do that at Impact Tech. <laughs> so we get people to fill in an application form. Yeah. And to be honest, it's, it's about data gathering. Mm. It's about filtering. It's about assessment. It's about being able to benchmark different companies. Mm. And frankly, it saves me time as an mm. investor because mm. I'm speaking to, you know, I might speak to five, six companies mm. in a day, mm. but I've then got to enter all of their details mm. into a system. That's just not going to happen. Yeah. And then it makes our ability to assess the best startups harder. Mm. So it's in the startup's best interest to, to actually to, fill in that yeah. information. Yeah. And to be honest, it shouldn't take that long. If you know, it, it should be simple questions like, you know, how much money do you make? Mm. How much money are you raising? Mm. Um, what is the CAGA for your industry? Mm. Uh, what is the market size? Who are your competitors? Uh, tell us what your company does in mm. a very simple description. What's your business model? These are all questions that really you should be able to just rattle off. It's a bit annoying to have to spend five, 10 minutes mm. filling in. But here's the thing. If you have to spend 10 minutes filling in an application form, and off the back of that, you get another 200 grand. It's worth it. <laughs> I, I'd argue that's probably the best 10 minutes you've ever spent in your life, yeah, right? Yeah, Personally. Yeah. So um, yeah. I wouldn't get too upset about it. Where's the application form? Is? Oh, impactxcapital.com. Go take a look. All right, and you can fill in the form. Um, but so 
let's have a think about what what needs to be in your data room and again stage um type of organization you're raising from this might change but mm. it doesn't matter don't you don't have to have different data rooms you just have a data room and then you just give them access and they'll look at what they need to look at mm. um some people will provide some kind of a guide to mm. data room so i have seen other organizations will provide a spreadsheet mm -hmm. which just lays out what the documents are where you can find them and what they mean and that can actually be quite useful otherwise you're just digging through mm -hmm. to be honest it's usually not that hard an experienced investor can look at your data room immediately and know where they need to go yeah right key things so let's start with pitch deck number one mm -hmm. that should be in your data room mm. that's that's a pretty obvious one mm. financial model if you have one yeah right and you know, it's a bit contentious. I know at early stage whether or not you need a financial model. Series A, definitely, definitely, yeah. there should be one. Seed, I'd argue, yes. Mm. Pre-seed, questionable, mm. right? But if you have one, please put it in there mm. and make sure you can review it. One thing I will say, little tip: if you're going to put in a financial model, put in formulas right mm. so that when people are reviewing it they understand where those numbers are coming from yeah there's nothing worse than a whole load of numbers and they're just numbers mm. i have absolutely no mm. idea how those numbers are achieved and that's right? a very good thing actually as you could actually you put tabs as well so if yeah. you're actually using source data like statistics from the government to back yeah. up your financial include model that. you should include that and put the links in and the references to where yeah. so that they can go and validate and verify that, that what you're saying is true yeah so i'd say those are really your core things your financial model um your pitch deck as well besides that then really you're starting to think about incorporation documents mm -hmm. so demonstrate proof that your company is legitimate mm. any share certificates that you might have mm. um any uh, is it a certificate of directorships as yeah, well? yeah exactly so yeah. sorry not really share certificates you don't put those yeah, in your yeah. data it's, room it's but the... certifications anything that is proof to the provenance mm. of the business mm. that must all be in there okay mm. then we're talking about things like market research yeah. right have you done any market research and this is actually surprisingly lacking mm. in a lot of data rooms because it's useful to have that because it allows the investor to go like you, these guys really know what they're talking about mm. they've done research they've come up with a thesis and it helps the investor to mm. understand that market a little bit better is it it's interesting that you said you mentioned the word their thesis yeah and we always tend to think that you know the thesis is something that the um investor has so right. something like the fund has yeah but actually you've just said a thesis is something that you as a as a um founder a founder yeah yeah should have yeah well, you should have you should have a belief in what you're doing mm. you should have a theory behind why your company exists and will be successful and you need to have religion about that you've mm. got to believe in that so there needs to be some data mm. that gives you confidence mm. That this business makes sense that validates your that thesis. validates your thesis and that's mm. what we want to see mm. right and then besides that things like cvs for your team mm -hmm. right not don't just provide a link to linkedin <laughs> please put in an actual pdf mm. with your with your team's cvs mm. um and then besides that really it's any go-to-market strategy yeah. any marketing collateral that mm. you might have anything that helps us understand oh um, success of the business, direction travel, any research documents that you have around your technology and your product, yeah. um, any patents that you might have, that, yeah. please put yeah. them in there. Uh, trademark registration <laughs> yeah. as well, another yeah. really important transfer thing. of ownership, transfer of ownership documents, yeah. right? All proof that say this is legitimate. Mm. Uh, management accounting, inf management accounts data, mm. so filed accounts and the rest. So again, there's a history there that we can see and understand. Mm. And those really, I'll call them, I'm sure there are documents mm. that I've missed mm. out of that because they, they can be quite an extensive yeah, yeah, yeah. list. Yeah. But I would say those are the key things that you want to see in your data room. And please, please, please don't just dump them in mm. to a massive folder. Mm. Do structure it mm. and ideally, you know, um, index it. So you have one, two, three, four, 
take your reader on a journey. This is the stuff we want you to look at. This is what's important. Mm. This is where you should focus. And mm. then here's appendix information. This yeah. stuff that's less important, mm. right, to you, but is useful, mm. right? Mm. And really, those are the key things. So, you know, just to summarize, core documentation that demonstrates provenance of your business, demonstrates any research and insights that you have, gives us basically the business model and the business plan and the financial model behind it and anything that explains who the team are, what the market is, what you're doing in this space. Oh, in contractual agreements that you might have with customers as well. Yeah, that's, that's really another important. really yeah. important one, right? Mm -hmm. Especially long-term agreements or proof of concepts or um, statements of work, whatever it might be mm. that demonstrates we are legitimate and this is what we're doing. Because that actually demonstrates revenue stream. Absolutely. Guaranteed revenue stream, Absolutely. which is so important. 100%. Yeah, yeah. So those are the key things. And that's yeah. it. There you go. You've got your Excellent. data room. So it is. I think I've learned a lot from this session. I think I need to go and add a few more documents to the old data room there. So I'll be doing that. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but look, it's, it's, it's really not that difficult. No. It's just about trying to stay organized, trying to keep, um, keep on top of that documentation and do keep those documents updated mm. as well, right? Mm. I and mean, that's why... You know, it sounds counterproductive, but you don't want to put too much into your data room mm -hmm. because if you're constantly having to update those documents, mm. that becomes a problem. And so sometimes, sometimes people want to do is what they want to be able to do is to put a live view onto their file system because mm. I don't want to have to update these documents all the time. That's bad. Thing, it is a bad right? thing. Because yeah, because when you're making certain making changes, you yeah. might break something yeah. or you might change something and then all of a sudden, and investors looking at it going, what's this? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So do have, you know, snapshots in yeah, time. Finished versions. Finished versions of yeah. documents in your data room. Mm. So I think that's it. So I think we've covered everything. We've covered guys. a lot yeah, there, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, just for everyone who listens to us, just as always, you know, we, we do our Perfect Your Pitch Day. It's really Pitch Deck Tear Down, first Friday of every mm. month. We had a great one today. Yeah, it was amazing. really good. It was really, really good. Really yeah. good. Next session will be on the 5th of August, yeah. as always. And please we, leave a review. And, and today, actually, we had a surprise guest, didn't we? We did. We had the, uh, the, you know, the incredible Andy Davis, who's a good friend. 10 by uh, 10. 10 by, leader, founder of 10 by 10 VC uh, with us today, helping us on our pitch day. So, you know, you never know who's going to drop by the Code Untapped studio mm. if you participate. So please do leave us a review. Let us know what you think. And let us know what you would like us to cover. We've already had a few suggestions. Mm. You can contact us on our socials, on Twitter, Instagram, all under Code Untapped. And, you know, we look forward to hearing from you. So I think that's it from me, Joe. And that's it from me. So just carry on keeping on. Fantastic. Take it easy. Take it easy, guys. See you next time. Cheers. Bye.